Here we are! This is the video! Oh my god! So I finished reading Turtles all the way down. Well, I finished reading it a while ago, but I'd like to share with you 14 lessons or thoughts I have from the book. I'm gonna try to keep these short and snippy. We don't drive the bus of our consciousness, but we can shelve our mind using presence. It's a tool that never leaves us, but we face it in varying degrees. I don't have a mental illness. I don't have OCD. I'll never know completely what that experience is exactly like. Like Aza's idea of the bus of consciousness and how we face the mind in varying degrees. I see the best way and what I learned from fishing is to shelve the mind. It's to be so present that you can shelve the mind and I can focus in the moment and I swear for hours I don't have any thoughts because I'm so in the moment and fishing and looking around. Reading this book, I've come to realize that I can empathize with people that don't face that exact experience, that have a lot more uh, struggles and a lot more challenges daily with the mind than I do. Life is the dancer and you are the dance. Like maybe life is the dancer and you're just one form of that dance. It kind of brings in the constants and variables idea. It goes along with the whole being the author, but not being the author in life. I don't have these in any particular order based off this book, but there are kind of spoilers in here, I guess. Isolating feelings spiral inward, interconnected feelings spiral outward. This is just something I've thought about. When I think about a feeling that's important to me, it sort of starts to seat and grows outward, like interconnectedness or love as a oneness or life as a dance. They're not focused on separation. There may be differences in what I'm connected to, but there's something similar about uh, the experience, whether it's something biological, what we're made of, atoms, stardust. Good feelings, I think, spiral infinitely outward, and that makes me feel connected, and that makes me feel like I belong in a lot of ways. A person touching you is like a unique sunset of colors on a canvas. When someone leaves us, it feels like losing that blend of colors. You can see everything you do in life as sort of somebody contributing to your canvas with different colors of paint. And losing somebody, to be alive is to be missing, is like losing a blend of colors, like losing a sunset on a canvas or a certain blend of colors. And that sort of made me think about grief and losing people. And how the more that we care and love about things, actually, the more we are likely to lose things. We're more likely to notice impermanence. We owe a lot to the first people that care and teach us how to love because they teach us things that we carry on and nurture in the future. They sort of help us see what potential we can grow and what we can connect and create and value. Two people that derive meaning similarly meet in the same meadow and maybe the how and feeling they have matches more than the music hurts. Sometimes when I connect with people I just meet, I get to a point where it seems like they just get it. Like their awareness of reality and what we face and how they feel, maybe the meaning they derive from experience or the meaning they create is very similar to mine. Aza says she can feel her mother's vibrating strings. You both meet in a third mind space, like in a meadow, you both know where the meadow is. Things are not always as they appear, of course, knowing without seeing. That's a classic theme, right? The more you dive into something, the more you ask questions, the more interesting the questions get, is something John Green has said. And that reminds me of the stars, and that reminds me of nuance. We just have to be accepting of nuance. As we get older, we experiment less with feeling and awareness can get us stuck with them. Aza talked about in the river being a kid and experimenting with feelings. It's when we're little kids, we don't really know the world yet, but I don't think we have the awareness of ourselves yet. So as we get older, it's almost like our increase in awareness can get us stuck with the feelings that we have because we become aware what feelings are and we understand or we can recognize moods. It's almost like awareness is a double-edged sword. It's good in some ways and bad in others. And real fear is not having a choice in the matter. More certainty than uncertainty. Yeah, certainty is, is in itself a good thing in ways, but it's also a bad thing, especially when it comes to when you don't have a choice about what you're facing or the circumstances you're in. Simple, yet profoundly powerful. To be alive is to be missing because caring includes suffering and loss. That which we love most may be clearer in absence. We are more focused on loss than on gain as humans. That's not to say that we can't appreciate things while we have them and care about them, but it's also to say that maybe in time, when you look back, that can sort of fuel your gratitude for caring more about things despite impermanence and despite losing them. We become what we worship. This one's huge. I can talk about this forever, but the simple idea is the one thing that you hold on to and care for all the time. Or if you worship something bad, that's all that's left over. It's almost like when you hold on to something, whatever you worship and focus on stays and everything else sort of fades away. Toasting to weird, be weird. Don't mimic someone else's sunset. You can't, if you're one sunset, you think you can perfectly mimic someone else's sunset? Probably not. It's interesting to create you. Become more yourself, if that's 
if that's a word. There is a beauty to how life does not provide closure. The fact that Turtles All the Way Down ends the way it does, and it doesn't provide, like, a, what you would expect, the, like, sort of made-up, sort of gimmicky closure that some stories provide, is enlightening. Stories don't really have a beginning, a middle, and an end all the time. Sometimes one of them morphs into another one, and one begins in the middle of another story. It also destroys our expectations of what could happen. There are possibilities for things that happen that completely defy my foresight and expectations of what could happen. And those are wonderful surprises sometimes. And then last but not least, number 14. All we need are reminders to care and begin. There's a lot of things to care about as a follower and a lot of things to do as a leader or a part of a team. When I was in middle school, I had this really awesome conversation with one of my friends, but we talked about just life and we had a nice conversation. And I was on the playground and I grabbed this pine cone on the ground. This could be a leadership image, you know? There's one way to life, there's the, the easy way, and then the, there's the rough way. That's kind of cool. So I took the pine cone home. And you know what? I still remember that conversation. I don't remember everything, but I remember it pretty well because I have a reminder. As I'm reminded from The Little Prince, growing up is not the problem. Forgetting is. There's a lot of leadership images. The nested dolls, Ferris wheel, uh, the meadows, the central flashlight being about control. There's a lot of metaphors in this book, and I think that's what I love so much about it, because metaphors remind me of fundamental truths. Life rhyming in ways we don't expect. Life as a choice is between wonders. The last part I put in here is life is a gift like the sun's light. We learn from that the first time we were given a gift, and we pass it on. And all we need are reminders of what we prioritize again and again and again. So what stuck with you? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Do you have questions? Did I, did anything click? What do you think? I really think that caring is what creates Remarkable. Caring again and again and again and turning that care into action. Even a book, a story, is a reminder of what we value and what we deem important. As always, thank you for watching. Keep being you. Don't forget to be awesome. And keep caring about things. All you need are reminders. Everybody, Paulkin.